Today we're going to expose a trick, trap, lie, deception, and wile of the enemy in his battle against your family and the families of those you love. So I'll tell you what, let's get started. child of God, welcome to the Rich Thoughts webcast brought to you by the Debt Free Army. Thank you so much for stopping by for a visit. Today, I'm teaching be a provider, not a loner. Be a provider, not a loner. Uh, you, uh, we're going to look at some scriptures different than they're normally done. So I want to get right into the teaching right now. Sometimes there's more to the word than meets the eye or even in what is preached in pulpits around the world. For instance, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8 says, But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith, and is worse than an infidel. It is generally assumed that this verse means that anyone who does not provide for their family members, meaning uh, clothing, food, shelter, or money, that they're worse than an infidel. Now, before I go any further, let me also give you the Amplified Translation of 1 Timothy 5.8. It says, If anyone fails to provide for his relatives, and especially for those of his own family, he has disowned the faith by failing to accompany it with fruits, and is worse than an unbeliever who performs his obligations in these manners. Now, I remember a conversation I had with a man some years ago. Truthfully, I don't remember what state, city, or even what year it was in. But it's been in the last five or six years. This man said that his family was sinning against God because they wouldn't give him the money that he was requesting, which he told them that he really needed. And he said they were sinning against God because they would not provide for him. And he was part of the family. Now, let me just tell you, that's goofy. That is goofy theology, and it's most certainly not what this scripture means. I'm amazed at how somebody can take one verse and make a doctrine out of it. Now, I want to look at the word provide, because according to Strong's Concordance, it is number G4306, and it means to provide, I'm sorry, to proceed before, foresee, to provide, think of beforehand, to provide for one, to take thought of, to care for a thing. Now, that particular Greek word for provide is mentioned two other times in the Greek concordance of the Hebrew of the King James Version of the Bible. And, and here's what it says. Romans 12, 17. Recompense to no man, evil for evil, provide things honest in the sight of all men. Now, that same Greek word is used also in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 21 where it says, providing for honest things, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. I find it interesting that in both these verses, or is this verse, for this Greek word for provide is used three times, and in the last two verses that I just wrote you, in both of those, that scripture has saying provide honest things. Honest things. So in essence, what we're saying is to do that we should do what is pleasing to God by thinking and planning ahead for our families, for their future well-being, spiritual and otherwise. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8 is not carte blanche for family members who want to take advantage of other family members by guilting them into giving or loaning them large sums of money to help somebody out of a hole that they dug all by themselves. Uh, we don't need to send good money after bad. And if Junior hasn't ever had a successful business before, loaning him more money is not going to give it a, make it a successful business this time, no matter how much he tries to play on your sympathy. Now, I want to go a little further. Um, but before I do, we're going to take a break, and we'll be back right after this. You know, there's all different kinds of money. There's hard-earned money, inherited money, stolen money, gambling money, and the list goes on and on. I'm Harold Herring, President of the Debt-Free Army, and I'm here to tell you about a very different kind of money, miracle money. 
I've discovered that God's miracle money is available not just to a select few, but to those who know how to reach out and receive it. I want to send you a free copy of a book that I helped develop and publish entitled Miracle Money. God told me to put this book into the lives of those who had the faith to pick up the phone and call 1-800-DEBT-FREE. If you're suffering economic hardship, if it seems you just can't make ends meet financially, then this may be the most important phone call you'll ever make. The book is free. The call is free. So why not pick up the phone right now and call 1-800-DEBT-FREE? Learn about the miracle money God's holding for you. Call 1-800-DEBT-FREE. Hey, child of God, welcome back. Visit our website, and while you're there, take your mouse, move up to the top where it says, sow a seed, just ask God if this is the day that he'd have you sow a precious seed into the ministry of the Death Free Army and the Rich Thoughts Television Network. Just do what he says. That's all I ask. All right, we're talking about be a provider, not a loner, but let's go a little further. I know some women who are very bitter uh, because of their divorce. And, and truthfully, I'm not justifying the behavior uh, uh, of the man who left them, who caused a divorce, or in some cases, the woman, the wife who left. Um, I'm not definitely not justifying the behavior of any sinful spouse, male or female, who abandons their family or responsibilities. But I've heard, I've heard people say to me, well, I'm going to take him or her to the cleaners so they've got nothing left to live on. Now, such an attitude and action will prevent both spouses from recovering financially, emotionally, and spiritually. I fail to see how putting a, a spouse in prison for non-support is going to help them generate income or child support. I, I think there has to be legally enforced alternatives to help families who've been abandoned. And, and my heart aches for single parents, especially single women, who have to work two and three jobs just to survive with and sometimes well, without child support and even sometimes with child support. And truthfully, the children are, well, they're the innocent victims in a divorce, and the emotional scars will just only grow deeper and more painful without the healing salve of the Word of God and, and, and a close relationship with our Heavenly Father. Make no mistake about it, though, God hates divorce. No question about it. Malachi chapter 2, verse 16, the Amplified Bible. For the Lord, the God of Israel, says, I hate divorce and marital separation, and him who covers his garment, his wife, with violence. Therefore, keep a watch upon your spirit, that it may be controlled by my spirit, that you may deal not treacherously or, fa or faithlessly with your marriage or mate. Now, this teaching is not about marriage or, or about how to resurrect your marriage, but I will say that if sin is removed from the equation, then I think there'd be a whole lot less in divorces. Uh, and, and truthfully, if a marriage can be saved, everybody would be much better off. 58% of all first marriages fail because of disagreements about debt and money. And I, I would say that if we can, uh, can resolve some of these issues effectively uh, with when it comes to the matrimony, doesn't need to be matrimony. There needs to be some protection there where things are done. And while I'm on my soapbox, let me add one thing. And that's about pastors who leave their wives for somebody else in their congregation, but never step down from the pulpit. What kind of example is that to members of the congregation for a pastor to talk about the sanctity of marriage and the importance of the family, but yet leaves his spouse or her spouse to take up with somebody else in the church without ever having a time for restoration? I think that's just, just wrong. It's the wrong kind of witness. But let's get back to providing for your own family. Without question, teaching your children the Word of God is providing for them. Openly, com openly communicating with the mother or father of your children is providing for your family. Loaning money to family members who are constantly in financial trouble is not providing for your family. It's perpetuating a lifestyle of somebody who's not going to take responsibility for the consequences of their actions because they know somebody's going to bail them out. And it's just time for that to stop. There comes a time when there needs to be a sensitivity to the Spirit and you need to stop sending good money after bad. Proverbs 22:26 in the New Living Translation. 
Don't agree to guarantee another person's debt or put up security for anyone else. Proverbs 17, 18 in the Contemporary English Version is even more blunt. It is stupid to guarantee somebody else's loan. So it's very clear that Scripture is not saying that providing for a family member is loaning them money or even co-signing a note. The best way, the best way to provide for your family is on a spiritual and attitudinal level. Teach them money management, other skills, things to help them once they grow older, to help prepare your children and grandchildren for the real world. That is providing for your family. I, you know, I'm not saying that a parent's responsibility isn't financial in nature, but I am saying there's much more to it. Providing, you, providing for your family is an operative command on so many levels. If you want those you love to avoid heartbreak hotel, then you need to provide insight and oversight for your loved ones through the Word of God. And, and faith is communicable and transferable, and you need to be providing the Word and revelation in the Word to your family. And there's a difference between providing and loaning, and you need to be a provider and not a loaner because the Scripture is very clear about that. And don't ever let anybody else confuse these Scriptures for you. Hey, go to our website, debtfreearmy.org. Make sure you go up to where it says sow a seed and do what God tells you. And by the way, send me an email to the address below. If you're the seventh person to do so, we'll sow $50 into your life. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And until we meet again, happy trails and keep thinking rich thoughts.